Thanksgiving this year. Um, I caught the turkey and feathered it myself. Um, ignore the fact that it has a Shady Brook Farms uh, wrapper around it and a Food Lion price tag from our local grocery store. Um, I swear I caught it myself. I swear! But anyway, this year, instead of um, actual stuffing and everything, I'm just going to stuff this turkey with um, some Pop-Tarts. And some cheese nips. Ah, what the heck. Lay's potato chips. <laughs> and some leftover Kentucky Fried Chicken, because why not? <laughs> you gotta be different every year, you know? And, hey, if it kills me, then... At least I'll die with a smile on my face and um, smiling taste buds. Okay, here's what you really came here to see. But first of all, Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and this is my first ever um, really um, Thanksgiving-oriented video. I did a quick little ride-along um, on the interstate last year, on um, the night before Thanksgiving, but um, this year we're gonna do um, a full-fledged Thanksgiving special that really doesn't have much to do with Thanksgiving now that I come to think of it. <laughs> but um, today we're going to be taking a look um, at an old friend of mine. And this is a laptop that we saw once on the channel back in 2015. This is the Dell Inspiron 1150. And this laptop is very historical to me despite it being um, a very plain, generic Dell laptop from the mid-2000s. Most people don't really care for these, and I can see why, but this has a lot of sentimental value. Um, you see, back in 2003, when I first bought my Dell Dimension 2350 desktop computer, not long after that, I wanted to get a um, laptop computer to complement it. And for about a year and a half, I saved all my money. I even opened up a savings account at the local bank just so I could buy my own laptop someday. And I remember between 2003 and 2004 working my butt off. Well, not really. Most of the money I earned was holiday and birthday money. but um, And some chores around the house, of course. But... I desperately wanted a laptop. Now, my dad at the time had a Dell Inspiron 2650 that I was welcome to use any time I wanted, as long as he wasn't using it. And um, I got a lot of good use out of it. It was a fun little laptop to play around with, but I wanted something of my very own that I could do whatever the heck I wanted with. And I spent that whole year um, researching. I, I knew that I wanted a Dell because back then I was a Dell fanboy, <laughs> and for fairly good reason. Dell was making um, pretty good machines at that time, um, although that's, I guess, kind of debatable. This, um, I, I did so much research on it, and then finally I decided upon the Dell Inspiron 1150 when I finally had enough money to get a laptop in November of 2004. Now, admittedly, I... Even though it took me a year and a half to save up the money to get this laptop, I really should have um, saved up a little bit longer to get something a little bit more substantial because this was um, Dell's um, second to um, cheapest laptop they had at the time. I forget what the um, bottom of the barrel was. I think it was a um, Inspiron 1000 or something. But this was the... Um, one step above the 1000, the 1150. It um, originally came with a 30 gig hard drive, a Intel Celeron processor, and back then um, Dell laptops, um, it, I guess specifically this model at least, used a um, the, uh, the uh, desktop style processor, and these were based, and these were um, the uh, Intel Pentium 4 era, but this was a Celeron. 
and it had 256 megabytes of RAM, which, believe it or not, especially for what I was using it for back then, 256 megabytes could get you a long way in late 2004. In fact, my Dell Dimension 2350 at the time was still on 256 megs of RAM, and that's uh, DDR1 me memory, by the way. And what else did it have? Um, well, and it came pre-installed with Windows XP Home Edition Service Pack 2. And I got that in November of 2004, and I adored the heck out of that thing. This, I, I worked my butt off to get that laptop, and I used the heck out of it, and it served me very well. Um, that is, until a year later when the motherboard died and I couldn't use it anymore. <laughs> Yeah, the problem is these Inspiron 1150s were very notorious for motherboard failures, and mine was no exception to that rule. It, exactly one year after I got it, to the day, in November of 2005, it died. Well, it started to die, and then by January of 06, it was completely dead. Which broke my heart, but... At least I was able to replace it with a nice Inspiron 6000 in January of 06, but we're not talking about that laptop tonight. We're talking about this one. Now, um, as I mentioned before, my original Inspiron 1150 died. I no longer have that computer. It's long gone. So, why is there a, another Inspiron 1150 sitting right here? Well, um, about three years ago, I got semi-nostalgic for my very first laptop and I decided to get on eBay and at the time and it still is the case these laptops are pretty much worthless <laughs> unless you're weird like me and have a lot of sentimental value for these and I was able to get one of the, get one of these um, this one actually for about forty or fifty dollars and um, I used it for a little while just to tinker around with, but it had one um, severe flaw, and that was the Ethernet port would not work. And um, I do not know why. I think it was a fault of the motherboard. Big surprise there. So um, I ordered another one off eBay, um, another motherboard that is, just to get a working um, Ethernet port. And that motherboard's... Um, Ethernet, while it worked, the um, the charging port for this did not work. So, I, so once the battery died on here, that was it. I could no longer use the computer. You can get a pattern here that these weren't really the the most well built laptops you could get, but I cannot explain why. I guess it's just um, blind nostalgia. I just like this laptop, <laughs> so, but. Unfortunately, I just did not have the energy or the patience to deal with that, so it sat under my bed for three years um, with a dead motherboard, and I decided um, eventually, you know what, let's go ahead and fix this, and um, that decision was made about two or three months ago when I was at a local Goodwill and came across a Inspiron 1150 that was in pretty rough shape, but the motherboard worked perfectly. So what I did was I just swapped the board out between the two. I actually swapped the um, lower base, actually. And we now have a perfectly functional Inspiron 1150 after all this time. And we're going to be taking a closer look at it this year on Thanksgiving. So let's start looking at it. Okay, just like the original I bought back in 04, this has the um, smaller screen with the thicker bezel down here. And um, it has, still has the original keyboard on here. Got our um, touchpad there. And just like most Dell laptops at the time, you get a um, Dell Access Direct button, which can be pro programmed to open up um, the specified um, application, usually Internet Explorer. Get your three LEDs here for power, um, hard drive, and battery. And speaking of the battery, there it is. Doesn't really hold a charge anymore, but oh well. Got our um, 56K dial-up modem, which I've never used. Never used it on my original either. And on the back, we got some 
a little bit of um, cosmetic damage there. We got our um, functional uh, charging port there. A blanking plate there. Um, I think other Dell laptops at the time may have come with like a PS2 port or an S video port there. Get two USB 2.0 ports, VGA out. Some um, Inspiron 1150s right here would have a um, Firewire connector, but this one does not. Got Ethernet, which now works. And on this side, um, we have our um, PCMCIA slot. Um, headphone out, microphone in, and a DVD-ROM slash CD-RW drive, which is um, what was in my original as well. Specs of this, um, my original had a 30 gig hard drive. This one has a 60 gig hard drive. My original had 256 megs of RAM. This one has one gig of RAM, which is the maximum this laptop can take. And as far as operating systems are concerned, uh, well, uh, I did something kind of um, bizarre to it um, recently. Normally, I'm known to keep these things original, especially if it has sentimental attachment. But I was needing a um, laptop for a specific purpose, and this was the best one I had at the time. So it's running a different operating system, which we'll be looking at momentarily. So, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and um, plug it up and um, start playing with it. Alright, let's go ahead and fire her up. Go into the BIOS first of all. I believe this is running the latest BIOS. Um, CMOS battery is um, still functional. It shows the proper date. And yes, I know this is not being recorded on Thanksgiving. This is a few days before, but... Anyway, um, Intel Celeron 2.6 GHz. Um, presumably my original had the same clock speed as well. Video controller, um, Intel 852GM um, video, which, as you can imagine, is really not that good, but for what I use this laptop for, and even back then, it fits the job just well. Has Sigma Tail 9750 audio, very, very basic stuff there. No DOS support, unfortunately. Um, Broadcom modem, 60 gig hard drive, CDRW DVDU combo. And as you can see, this is pretty much what every Dell at the time used for a BIOS, just about. There's no floppy drive on this laptop. And battery's charging. Um, again, it does hold a charge, but unplugged, it usually only lasts about, uh, if you're lucky, 30 minutes. <laughs> and power management and uh, security goodies there. Okay. Just the camera a little bit. I really need to get a better camera for this channel. <laughs> Okay, um, let's see what operating system I have installed on here. Yes, that's right, Windows 2000 Professional. reason I went with this is because um, I'm needing a laptop to play older computer games on, and while Windows XP would probably do reasonably okay, I wanted something that looked a little bit more old school. And I would have preferred to use Windows 98 on here, but it's not compatible with this laptop at all. I've tried hardly any driver support, and um, there's IRQ conflicts up the wazoo. And same story with Windows ME as well. So Windows 2000 um, plays most of my vintage games. And for DOS games, I've got DOS box on here, so that's fairly seamless there. Again, um, if you want something truly vintage for um, playing old computer games, I would go with 95 or 98, not 2000. Okay, we're trying to connect a network drive that's not there. Okay. 
And yes, I do have a, a true vintage laptop, my Compact Armada 7730 MT. But it has one severe flaw with it at the moment. The hinges on it are just terrible. <laughs> and when I'm lying in bed playing computer games, it keeps shutting on me. <laughs> so um, anyway, we're booted into Windows 2000. This is um, an operating system beloved by many people. Um, as you may recall in a recent video where we used Windows 2000, I, I mentioned that I never really used Windows 2000 when it was still a supported operating system. It, I had no access to it. Um, I couldn't afford it back then, obviously, and all the computers I had at the time came with Windows XP, which did the job just fine for me, but if I'd had access to Windows 2000 back then, I'm sure I would have loved it. Um, I didn't get to use it until 2008, and by then, even though it was still under uh, Microsoft support, it was just getting to be a little too old to use it for stuff back then. So yeah, I do regret not having access to Windows 2000 back then, because from what I've heard, it's the most perfect operating system um, ever made by Microsoft, apparently. <laughs> the way a lot of people go on about it. Um, one thing I forgot to mention about this laptop is that despite its age, it actually has um, onboard Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi um, Wireless G. This was the first laptop I ever had to have built-in wireless. The, um, the signal strength on it was always complete garbage because it was still a new concept at the time. But um, it was still cool to have. And we're currently not connected to any networks at the moment, but we really don't need that for this video. So, um, let's take a look and see what we have um, as far as hardware. Device Manager. Okay, there's our um, crappy Intel video. Uh, Broadcom dial-up modem, our network cards, um, Ethernet and Wi-Fi, our um, Sigmatel audio, and all our chipset goodies. Okay, now let's take a look at the software we have installed on here, if you can see it or not. But I can read it out. Got DOSBox on here for DOS gaming. Again, um, it's I'm kind of cheating with that, but it's mostly seamless. Got Jazz Jack Rabbit 2. Again, all most of the stuff you're seeing on here, um, I was not doing on this laptop back in 2005 when this was my main laptop. But I would love to also have XP on here, but XP and 2000 are a pain to dual boot together, even though it's definitely possible. Um, each OS install um, does not have the um, drive C drive letter and that if you boot into like Windows XP it'll be on drive D or or um, vice versa and that just drives me crazy I I have to have my operating systems on drive C but I think that's a limitation of the NTFS file system and I probably said something really stupid and wrong, and I'm sure someone will correct me. Got our Maxis games on there. Even got Microsoft Bob. I actually did have Microsoft Bob on my original 1150 back in 2005 when I first discovered it. Ran just fine on XP, believe it or not. Got our Microsoft games, including Monster Truck Madness, Works. I believe that's Works Suite. My original came with Work Suite um, 2004, I believe, but this one's 2002. The Gus Games, Roxio EC CD Creator, um, VLC Media Player, and Office 2002. Didn't have the full Office Suite on my original back in the day, but I did have Word 2002, as you're seeing right here. I did a lot of typing on this um, computer back in the day. Um, as a matter of fact, 
Um, I was actually allowed to take this laptop with me to school and take notes and do schoolwork on it because um, I was a lot faster at typing than I was at writing. And I was very grateful for that. And I was pretty cool too, <laughs> carrying a laptop into school back then in the mid 2000s. Okay, um, I guess we can um, fire up a game on here. Let me go pick one out. Okay, I think I picked out a game that doesn't require a CD or anything, and we're going to plug in my Logitech controller to the back of it. Presumably these USB ports work. Actually, they should. I had to use a flash drive to install the drivers on here. <laughs> Okay, let's go to our uh, game shortcut folder. And load this game up. This is Jazz Jack Rabbit 2 from 1998. A game that, for obvious reasons, doesn't require a lot of power, so it should run without any trouble at all on this laptop. Adjust our video settings. Okay. Increase the color depth. And hardware mode on. Even though it's just Intel video, but this is Intel video from the early to mid 2000s, so that shouldn't be a problem at all. Oh yeah, pl plays just fine. This is one of those games that when it was new, I did not know of its existence at all. And looking back, I wish I had known of its existence because it's a great game. And I especially would have loved it back then when I was a kid. First time I ever played anything Jazz Jackrabbit related wasn't until 2010 when I discovered um, LGR's video about Jazz Jackrabbit Holiday Hair 95, which prompted me to get a copy of it for myself and try it out. And I fell in love with it, and eight years later, still love it. I will admit, though, um, as nice as this game is, I do prefer the original Jazz Jackrabbit for dolls. This one's, um, I don't know. <laughs> it's hard to explain. You know, I bet I'm the only person in the world that has any love for um, the Dell Inspiron 1150 line of laptops. <laughs> I know they're junk. I know most of them are dead by now, and this one will probably be dead within a year, I bet. But I just love them. It was the first laptop I ever had to call my own. I even started the Carolina Circle City blog on that laptop. I opened the, the account and everything on it back in September of 05. And, that's, and that blog is still going to, the, to this day. I remember um, April of 2005, I was um, bedridden for a week with a very severe cold, and during that week, my Inspiron 1150 was my best friend, because at the time, I was um, first getting into 90s nostalgia, 
and I was, I guess, 15 at the time, and I was able to spend that week in bed, away from school, and all the anxiety that school was causing me at the time, long story, but, um, I remember lying in bed, watching, um, old Nickelodeon game shows, and looking up um, the history of Nickelodeon and everything related to that on my Inspirato 1150. As a matter of fact, um, one night during that whole um, sickness, I was, um, I could not sleep at all. In fact, I didn't get to sleep at all that night because um, the discomfort my cold was causing me. And that whole night, to keep myself comforted, I just spent a whole bunch of time on the Inspiron 1150 looking up um, stuff from my childhood that I hadn't seen in years at that time. And this is stuff I kind of take for granted these days. And I just realized I'm being nostalgic for being nostalgic. It's come to this point, folks. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really that pathetic. And by the way, why do, um... Why are bats in video games always relentless? <laughs> so yeah, this laptop... It'll probably be dead soon, so I'm just enjoying it while I can. <laughs> I'm considering getting a better battery for it because the nice thing about old Dells like this, um, even going back to the Latitude C series from the late 90s, you can still buy brand new batteries on eBay for them. Now, they'll be um, cheap Chinese batteries, but they still work great. And most vintage laptops these days... It's just impossible to find batteries for, but by some miracle, they're still making um, old Dell batteries. So that's why um, when a lot of people um, ask me what I recommend for um, a vintage gaming laptop, I always recommend um, old Dell laptops because you can still get batteries for them, which ad really adds a good level of portability. And you're not always having to be tethered to um, a power cord. Ah, stupid rats. <laughs> Again. Oh, you're yeah, getting with the bats. <laughs> okay, that was an obviously a glitch. <laughs> and there are cheat codes for this game, but they don't work very well. <laughs> Sugar Rush, huh? See, so yeah, for um, older games like this from the late 90s, early 2000s that don't require a lot of power, this laptop can play them just fine. Now, ideally, I would love it if this laptop was able to play, um, not play, but run um, Windows 98, but the drivers for this laptop just do not exist for Windows 98, and on top of that, you've got the IRQ conflict problems. And the Inspiron 2650, which I've done videos about before, unfortunately I don't have the laptop anymore, it, um, it could play, uh, it could run Windows 98 just fine um, with the proper setup switch when you install Windows 98, because without that it would have similar IRQ problems that this laptop has. But for some reason, when I use that same switch on this laptop, it just doesn't work as well. So, um, yeah, anything Windows 9X based, 
it's just not going to happen on this laptop. So Windows 2000, while not the most ideal, still gets the job done. And again, I would have loved to have had Windows 2000 back in the day. But I just wasn't fortunate enough to have access to it. Okay, we got a boss level here. Wow, she sounds like my ex-girlfriend. I don't know if we'll actually make it through this. We did, just barely. Okay, now on to something else. This video might get repetitive if we're not careful. Okay, now I want to show off how this laptop can play, um, like, older games, like Windows 3.195 stuff. It's by showing some older, um, Humongous Entertainment games. So, um, I'm going to have to turn the resolution and the color def down. Unfortunately, there's no QRes icon on Windows 2000, at least on this particular, um, install. So we're just going to have to do it the hard way. There we go. Doesn't look pretty, but it will look better once we load up a game. Um, you know what? Thanksgiving, it involves food, so let's just go with the old standby Fatty Bear's birthday surprise. And as you can see, it's Tomorrow running flawlessly. And, and again, I'm sure XP would have done the job just fine, but uh, I just got enough. I got enough computers right now with XP on it, and I wanted to change things up. Eventually, what I want to do, since these hard drive caddies are so easy to swap out, I want to get a second hard drive caddy and a second hard drive so I can swap between XP and 2000 on this. Until this laptop inevitably um, blows up into an inferno. <laughs> yeah, plays just fine on here. Of course, ideally, this game is made for Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. I don't know why that amuses me so much. Before I got my um, Packard Bell Legend 1510 Supreme in 2005, in the early part of that year, I do recall sitting up on this very workbench on the Dell Enstron 1150 and playing Fatty Bear's Birthday Surprise on it. And it was at that moment when I realized I would rather have a actual vintage computer to play this game on. Because even though it ran reasonably well on XP it just didn't feel the same I wanted true Windows 95 so yeah that's just a little proof of concept there let's turn our resolution back up Okay, um, one quick thing I want to show, even though I really don't have it set up on here. we got Microsoft Virtual PC 2004. And this was a um, program I used quite a bit on my original 1150. This was in the latter part of 2005, pretty much 
um, right before the laptop cooked itself. Um, this was the most amazing thing ever, in my opinion, at that time. Having virtual computers to run multiple operating systems on your main computer without dual booting was just phenomenal. I was just amazed by that. <laughs> now, of course, I don't have any virtual machines on here at the moment. Probably never will. I just mainly installed on here just for the heck of it. And that's version 2004. Okay, now for some DOS gaming. Um, yes, that's right. This can play DOS games with DOSBox. <laughs> Again, this is cheating. But for the most part, except for a little bit of sluggishness here and there, it's pretty um, um, seamless. So let's uh, fire up... Uh, hmm. Jill of the Jungle 2. We've seen the first game plenty of times on this channel, but we've never really played um, the sequel before. Oh yeah, we, we can use my USB gamepad here, because DOSBox is cool. I'll calibrate it. Okay. Yeah, the sound effects and music in this game is completely different from the original. And I have to say, um, the original I think is a lot better on that aspect. I don't know why the knife sounds like it's burping. There we go. Now, I've only played this game, like, twice, maybe, and that was uh, several years ago. So I'm not sure how far we'll be able to get. Yeah, we're about to die, I think. Yeah, <laughs> we died. Yeah, on the original um, game, on the map screen, there were no enemies. But on this one, they took it up a notch. And there was a third Jill the Jungle game, but I've never played it before. I do have a copy of it. And as far as the original, I do remember playing it on the original Legend 822 back in the day. I think it was one of the many games we downloaded off the America Online Games channel. Even though it's, I know it's impossible, just as impossible as time travel is, I wish there was a way you could connect a vintage computer up to the internet and have it access the internet of like 1995, 1996. And I'm not talking about the internet archive or anything like that. I'm talking about the real internet from back in the day. Load up like like going to America Online, going to all the channels just as they were, send and receive email just like you could back in the day. I think it's something that would be really cool, although obviously impossible. We 
finally get to a level. So yeah, this game runs pretty well on this computer. Of course, this is a game from like 1992, 1993, and on a laptop from 2004, so... There's really no effort being made here. <laughs> okay, dead end. I do remember this game being quite a bit harder than the original. Yeah, I had a feeling that would happen. <sighs> Spikes are deadly. Which, that's pretty much universal for all video games. <laughs> Boy, I am doing wonderful tonight, aren't I? <laughs> At least there's not a live system on here. Or the game probably would have been over by now. <laughs> Okay, that's enough of that. That pretty much proves that DOS gaming is possible on here with a bit of um, very, very dirty cheating. <laughs> so yeah, um, might as well go ahead and conclude the video here. Um, I know I've said this a million times in this video already, but I just like this laptop. Um, I know no one else does, but... For the for the mere one year that I had this laptop when it was new, I just had the time of my life with it. I was doing so much on it. I was experiencing so many things that were happening in my life on that laptop, and it was and when it died in um, a year later, instead of um, being angry about it, saying, "Oh, why did Dell build a piece of crap laptop like this, and why did he sell it to me?" I was I was actually pretty depressed about it. I was like, oh, I had so many good times with this. Why'd you have to die? <laughs> but anyway, um, I guess it'll about do it for this video. Um, happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Um, if you're wondering what I'm thankful for this year, well, I'm obviously thankful for my channel here. Um, 2018, we've grown exponentially. Um, not just because of the rebrand this year. Um, we've had so many subscribers this year. We hit, we broke the 10,000 subscriber mark back in the, um, the summer. And I am very grateful for that this year. And um, thank you. Thank you so much for um, supporting this channel and everything I do for you guys. Um, I'm glad you are still entertained by my content after all these years. So, again, Happy Thanksgiving. Hope you have a good one. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. 
Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.